All right, in this step, we're going to set up your regions that have been pre-configured. So we're going to find a folder called Use Me to Create Regions. You can uh, use this one here, or I would just leave it and make a copy of the bin. And make a, We'll call it uh, Welcome and Welcome Center. Welcome. That way you always have a fresh install to use. And then we'll take this one, just copy the entire contents of the bin folder, everything inside of it, and just paste it inside of there. Okay. So the first step is to, uh, we're going to go into Regions, the Regions INI. &I. All you got to do in here is set your URL to your uh, server. So if you put a login.mygrid.com, we'll put that here. And then put that here as well. Then just go ahead and save that. And close that out. Next step is to edit the gridcommons.ini, which is under in config include gridcommons.ini. Here you're going to set your uh, region database that you create. I don't recommend using this robust one for your regions. You just, every s server simulator that you set up and run, as long as it's not uh, like say the same user that's got a bunch of regions, you want to keep it under the same one. But let's say Joe orders a bunch of regions and then Frank does, you would make, let's say, that would you put Joe here or Frank whatever database you've set up for for that particular person or instance here you're going to put your mysql username and your mysql password just remember you can always you can set up as many databases as you want you just go into mysql or mariadb and just create a new database and whatever you make you put here so if you're like freebie mall you could put freebie mall there uh, so we're going to go down from here Here's if you want to restrict outbound permissions. So uh, if you don't want people taking stuff off your grid, change this to false. Uh, if you want to allow hypergridders to come in and get stuff, then just leave it. Here is if you want to allow or restrict your inventory when you travel abroad. Default is true, and I recommend leaving it like that unless you're a private grid and you want to be able to access your own items elsewhere. But if you're trying to run a commercial grid, it's not a good idea to leave this true because then anybody can TP out of your grid and access whatever contents they have in their inventory with no protection and if you have creators they might get a little pissed off that you are not protecting their content so keep going down uh, and that's it for this one so just go ahead and save that and now we're going to go back and find the folder or the ini file called opensim.ini which is right here, we're going to edit this one. Now in here, you're going to define your URL to your grid, just like you did in the robust. You're going to go down. I've set warp tiles here. Uh, so it's 3D map tiles. Uh, if you want, I also added a little bit of extra comments here. If you want it to auto-generate, change this number to something like in seconds higher than zero. Just if you leave it at zero, that means map tiles will not generate unless you restart the robust or the not robust, but the simulator itself. Uh, if you want it to auto-generate, just you know put some large number in there. And it, remember, it uses a lot of memory when it's taking the snapshots of the region, so I leave it at zero and just restart my regions once in a while, and it updates the map tiles. That's up to you. Here is uh, allow grid gods true. Uh, this way you can define users level 200, 100, or etc., and they can gain powers in your in your grid. If you don't want gods at all, you can set that to false. Uh, this is for region manager is god. Um, I would set this, I'm going to set it to false, that way that uh, people that uh, are region, spell it right, region managers can assume god powers, like say if you got a bunch of people that are helping you and, they, and you need them to work on the regions, you can set that to true so that any region they manage they can claim god powers, but for the all intents and purposes we'll just leave it as false. Here is the HTTP listener port. This is UPD. 
or UDP rather, uh, each simulator that you run has to be a different one. So say you you run a different, just change it, just change it to another number and then save it because each one has to be unique. If you happen to try to start one that's the same, the one that's the second one will just crash out. So if it keeps crashing, you just come check this and make sure you haven't got it the same as the one that you've already set up. I'll keep going. You need to set this to your URL for uh, for it to, all, to to offline the messaging works. You need to have a URL set here. So just put your FQDN or your IP address in there, in there like that. Just put it in, and then keep going down. This is where you set the currency server URL. So here you're going to put your A record or IP address in there. If you want to charge for uploads, you set that whatever number you want there. For group creation, you would set whatever you'd like there as well. This default is zero. And we have set OS functions already, very low, and then we've allowed these certain functions to pass through. Uh, with my experience these are pretty much safe I haven't had any troubles with them it's been donated from various grids around put together and they're categorized in in the threat levels very pretty easy to read straightforward if you don't want OSL functions you can just remove this entire section just kind of highlight up here go all the way up to the top delete this and then you can just change allow OS functions to false and save it but we'll just leave it the way it is because everybody likes to have that extra features with NPCs and walk-in teleporters and such and there's a few other goodies up there keep going down if you have a Vivox password and, and username uh, which would be sent to you if you've signed up for one just cut and paste that whole sec a bit of code right in under here somewhere under this area just paste it and save keep going down And that's it for that. So go ahead and save that and close that out. Uh, the next step is to create a shortcut on your desktop from OpenSim.exe. So you just put that here and we'll rename that, let's say, Welcome. And you go ahead and start it. And it will connect to your Robust. And with any luck, you can open up a, a, a web a, a browser uh, or a viewer rather and enter the URL of your grid which would be let's say login.mygrid.com colon 8002 and you can log in with the created username and password now if you haven't created one you can go into robust which is like this and you can type create user it'll ask you for a user so we'll say monkey you know, mon mon monkey but and it'll ask you for a password you can just put that you can skip the email if you want and just you know, kind of hammer through that with enter and then you can go ahead and log in with the username that you created so that's pretty much how you get your grid set up and running uh, with these pre-configured files if I've missed anything I will try my best to cover it in an additional video but I think I got everything on this one so I hope this works for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any troubles, and I'll do my best to help you fix it. Fix it. And thank you for watching. And if this was useful, you can always donate to us at joshbohm.com under donate, and much appreciated. And thank you again. Bye.